I'd like to speak to you tonight about courage. From the moment we take our first breath, we need courage. That capacity to keep going in the face of fear or danger, to get back up when we fall or fail, to keep our eyes firmly fixed on the light shining in darkness. It takes courage, writes the poet E.E. E. Cummings, courage to grow up and become who you really are. Without courage, says Maya Angelou, we cannot practice any other virtue with consistency. We cannot be kind, true, merciful, generous, or honest without courage. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Winston Churchill. Consider this. Every person in the Christmas stories were, was compelled to take a dangerous journey. And Mary and Joseph took more than one. Remember that Mary is young, perhaps as young as 14, when she is first summoned by an angel to the task of bringing God's child into the world. And the angel tells her not to be afraid of this frightening request. Seriously? But still, she says yes. At 14, what courage. Joseph, her betrothed, presumably devastated by the news that Mary is pregnant with a child not his, plans to break off their engagement quietly. But then an angel appears to him in a dream, telling him not to be afraid to take Mary as his wife, for the child to be born will be of God, the angel tells him, and you Joseph are to raise him as your own. You, Joseph, in the words of W.H. Auden, you are to do what is difficult as if it were easy. Was he afraid? But he did, as the angel said, with courage. And just as Mary was about to give birth, Caesar Augustus declares that all men under the authority of the Roman occupation must return to the villages of their birth to be registered. There was one overriding purpose of such registration, to instill fear into the entire populace. Joseph was from Bethlehem, a long way from where they were living, in Mary's hometown of Nazareth, but he had no choice but to go. Curiously, he decides to take his pregnant betrothed with him rather than leave her with her family, perhaps fearing for her life, or maybe Mary insisted on going with him. We don't know. But think of it, traveling nearly a hundred miles on foot, or maybe a donkey, at the end of a pregnancy? What kind of courage does such a trail of tears require? When they arrive in Bethlehem, there's no spare guest room for them among Joseph's family, no place inside when Mary's labor begins. So she labors outdoors, probably in a cave where the domesticated animals spend the night. Picture that, this young girl, far from her family, with only her husband and perhaps a stranger to help her to deliver. The shepherds in the field were met by angels that night who terrified them with the news of the child's birth, and, and then they depart. And the shepherds resolve after they go. The shepherds resolve to see for themselves what they had been told. 
and courage led them on. And much later now, perhaps as long as a year later, magi, members of the priestly class of another land and another faith, arrive in Jerusalem asking for the child-born king of the Jews, for they had seen his star rising in the east, and they were immediately summoned before Herod, the proxy king in Jerusalem, a ruthless and a power-obsessed ruler who knew nothing of this child. And you may remember that he instructed the Magi that they should, once they find the child, they should return and tell him, which they did not do. And after Herod realizes that the Magi had not complied with his command, he sends his soldiers to harm the child. But Joseph, warned again in a dream, packs up his young family and journeys yet again fleeing this time to Egypt, where they live as refugees until Herod dies, and it's safe to go home. That's the story. And if this story of Jesus' birth means anything at all to us, surely it means that God is willing, eager in fact, to take up residence in this complex, messy imperfection of human existence, yours and mine and ours together, and that sometimes, sometimes God asks ordinary people to take extraordinary journeys on rather short notice. And on that journey, God draws upon the gifts and contributions of the whole motley crew of us to fulfill purposes far beyond our understanding. Now, to be sure, what God does in Jesus is in fact the great miracle here. But right beneath that one is the miracle of courageous response of those who get caught up in the audacious hope of it all, who say, Yes, count me in and carry on with it with perseverance and grit. So take courage from this, courage to live your lives fully, wholeheartedly on whatever journey you're on and dare to believe that God is right there with you, taking up residence right there And remember, it's not the critic who counts, as Theodore Roosevelt famously said a hundred years ago or so. No, life belongs to those in the arena, on the journey, those who strive valiantly, who come up short again and again because there's no effort without error or shortcoming. Better to fail at the things that matter Marian Wright Edelman exhorts us all as she goes about tirelessly defending the most vulnerable children in our land. Better to fail at the things that matter than to succeed in mediocrity. Better to fail, Brene Brown would tell us if she were here, daring greatly. I don't know the nature of your journey, the challenges of your life, and the places where you may feel you're stumbling now or where your heart is breaking as you watch a loved one stumble or suffer. But God knows. God knows and is there with you in that place. And that space inside where you hold that, all that you would give anything not to hold, that's your manger. It's where Jesus is most pleased to dwell. And he knows better than anyone how much it costs you to have courage there. 
writing of her own physical struggles, the science fiction writer Veronica Roth gives voice to many. Sometimes bravery is nothing more than gritting teeth through pain and the work of every day, the slow walk toward a better life. That's your journey, hear this. Jesus' birth into your world and mine is a light that shines. Light that shines in that particular darkness that the darkness cannot overcome. And it may seem dim, that light for now, but Jesus is here. He's with us and he's for us. We can believe in him when all else fails, when we fail, when those we counted on fail us. So dare greatly and step toward him and his light tonight. Take a breath and ask him for what you need to keep going. There's one more thing I'd like to say that many in this cathedral and beyond know far better than I. And that is that to receive Jesus is also to be summoned by him in ways large and small to serve God's purposes for good in this world. And the summons almost always takes the form of a journey as it did for those present at his birth. And the journey generally takes us places we'd rather not go, to places where there is chaos and confusion, injustice, where there is need of warmth and compassion and forgiveness, both in society and the human heart. It can be a thrilling journey, but it can be terrifying. It can be the fulfillment of your heart's desire, and it may also be the realization of your deepest fear. But the summons is real. And those who receive it and take steps to follow soon realize there's no better path to walk. And you know who you are. You know the cost of living so that some of that goodness and love God longs to manifest in the world is embodied in you. Thank you. I pray this night affords you a bit of rest, that you might feel God's gratitude for all that you are and all that you offer, and that even in the hardest times you can trust in the goodness of the path. We need not be perfect to walk it. We will never feel ready any more than those at his birth felt ready, will never fully understand the mystery at the heart of our existence. All we need, remember, to hang on to tonight is that God is with us. Jesus is for us. And you and I have been given one miraculous life, one opportunity to live fully, wholeheartedly in this world on this path. It takes courage to become who you really are. It takes courage to receive him, courage to follow where he leads. So travel well, carry on. Trust the light shining in darkness will be there for you to illumine your path. Amen.